Hi, Sean McCracken here from Hotel News Now with uh, Alex Tisch, uh, VP of Lowe's Corporation and uh, Executive Vice President and Chief Commercial and Development Officer for Lowe's Hotels. Uh, Alex, uh, so what's what's new and interesting in the world of Lowe's Hotels these days? Uh, sure, so we've got five new developments uh, in the ground right now, two opening up this summer, uh, the first being Endless Summer at Universal Orlando, 750 keys opening up in late June. Uh, then we have our project with the Texas Rangers and the Quarters Companies live by Lowe's Arlington, Texas opening up in uh, August 22nd at the base of Globe Life Park and AT&T Stadium uh, right before football season. So those are the two big openings we have this summer and then on the tail of that we have our project in St. Louis, live by Lowe's St. Louis, uh, um, excuse me, 220 Keys and the other two phases of Endless Summer, uh, the dockside, excuse me, opening up uh, early next year. Mm -hmm. So, at this point in the cycle, I mean, where are the real opportunities for a company, company like Lowe's? So what we find is that um, the opportunities that we see are mostly by embracing being an owner-operator. And when we look at projects, we don't really look at projects like a normal developer with a short-term investment horizon. We have a longer-term investment horizon that makes us a really appealing partner to cities and municipalities and like-minded capital sources. So for us, it's really where we're opportunistic and you know having an owner operator model allows you to look outside of the normal spectrum of what everyone else is doing because there are very few owner operators left in the industry mm -hmm. so it seems like in addition to be being fewer owner operators there's fewer of the kind of focused in um, like own brand type of companies that Lowe's is. I mean, how does that uh, impact distribution for you guys? What's your overall strategy there? Sure. So, you know, obviously having 24 hotels in, uh, in the United States, or I should say in, in North America, um, puts us at a, at a distribution disadvantage to, uh, to obviously the big brands and companies mm -hmm. that, that are all here. So I think what, we, what we've gotten comfortable with is that, is that we're never going to have the distribution of a Marriott, a Hilton, or a Hyatt, and, and, and that's fine. But what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to try and what we call as a disintermediate the distribution disadvantage we have. And, and we do that through two things. The first is by, you know, catering a strategy to areas where it isn't at, distribution isn't as important. Um, first, we look at big, uh, big group convention center hotels, and obviously, with distribution disadvantages we have on a transient side, we make up with that by grouping up those hotels mm -hmm. significantly. Um, and, and group we sell nationally through a, a, a direct sales force we have, as well at the, as at the asset level. Then the other way we try and uh, try and you know compete with our, our distribution disadvantages through our immersive destinations. And the way we view inver excuse me immersive destinations, we say that okay what. What is a, a demand generator that's not just the city or municipality itself? An example for, excuse me, in Orlando, for example, we have 9,000 keys there. Mm -hmm. um, all those keys are tied to Universal's, uh, Universal Studios, or it's a Universal Orlando theme parks. You know, the projects we're looking at now, they either have a lot of meeting space or they're an immersive destination. In Arlington, Texas, it's with the uh, Texas Rangers baseball team, mm -hmm. right? They have huge brand affinity that helps, that helps us, you know, pull, uh, pull. Uh, guests, and now with St. Louis at the St. Louis Cardinals. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I mean, from your perspective, I know there's a lot of talk at this point about how much runway there's left in the cycle. And from a macro view, how optimistic, pessimistic are you about the hotel industry and how much uh, room there is left to grow? I'm not optimistic nor pessimistic. I think it's fine. Um, obviously, you know, I think the slide that we saw this morning said we have had 108 months straight of RevPAR growth. Um, that's mm -hmm. relatively unprecedented in the industry. Mm -hmm. Understanding that the last downturn was pretty severe. Um, you know, we're starting to see business stabilize a bit, but not mm -hmm. necessarily fall off. Mm -hmm. Uh, so are there, are there any markets out there that you guys don't have a presence now that really intrigue you? Any places that you think are, are uh Prime for growth. Look, we focus primarily on the on the continental United States now. Um, mm -hmm. We are, you know, as an owner operator with a very liquid balance sheet, we're always looking at projects. Um, you know, what we're tending to find are that we want to be at places where they want us there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, public-private partnerships, uh, partnerships with a lot of the sports teams are still talking about because mm -hmm. they own a lot of the a lot of the um, land around their stadiums. Mm -hmm. um, really, just kind of focusing on what we're good at, which is developing big convention center hotels in cities mm -hmm. that want that, that need that kind of investment to spur uh, tourism. It seems like um, 
a little bit earlier in the cycle, those sort of big box hotels were less uh, in vogue for developers, but it, the last couple of years, it's, it seems to, to have changed a bit. Has that impacted anything you guys? You know, uh, I, what I'd say is that if you look over history, I think the amount of meeting space being built in the United States is at a low. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's a function of a few things, but, um, but what we're seeing is that the opportunity to really build Class A meeting space for the Convention Center Hotel, like, like the Lowe's Kansas City, mm -hmm. is um, there aren't that many people looking to do it. Mm -hmm. And we're finding really interesting opportunities as a result of that and being an owner operator with an infinite investment horizon. It makes us a good partner of choice for, for cities looking for that investment. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks a lot, Alex. I really appreciate your time. All right, thank you. Yeah.